February 23rd, 2017, I suffered a severe concussion playing basketball at Brigham Young University, Idaho. Two days later, I had to receive emergency life-saving brain surgery, where they removed a cutie orange-sized portion of my left frontal lobe. My name is Matt Fails, no pun intended. I live to tell my true story. So, um... <laughs> Matt was a great roommate, and I was really bored a lot of the time when I uh, had the evenings open, wasn't working. So if he had a game, I'd go to his games. So I went to one game in particular, and Matt was going to save a ball that was going out of bounds, and he tipped it back in. But as he jumped to tip it back in, he puts two feet up against the hanging banner, and both feet hit it, and he's probably about six feet up in the air with the feet maybe five, and then since it doesn't really uh, bounce you back at all, it just gives completely, Matt falls it down completely, hits his head. Didn't look like you, you hit your head, though. It looked like you hit your side, maybe your shoulder. Um, and then I looked over, and you were laying on the ground, and I was like, oh, maybe you got hurt a little bit. And then they stopped the game. And the next thing you know, he, uh, he's laying down there, and he's not – he's blacked out. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Um, and then they started calling around for the the medical team for student support or whatever you call it, intramurals. Um, and then they ended up calling in the ambulance. And then they got the gurney out for the stretcher to come get you. And by then, you had been wake, awakened. Um, and you were at answering basic questions about who you are, what day it was, and stuff like that. And you're answering them pretty well. Um, but definitely not how you would have normally answered them. Like, oh, I'm Matt Fails, nice to meet you. It's more of Matt Fails. Very, very solemn and quiet and slow, but still getting the point across, so that was good. Um, and then they took you in, I believe, through the ambulance. I was crossing the street from the STC to the Benson, and I saw an ambulance, like, in between the buildings going over to the ice center. I was like, huh, I wonder what happened. But then I just went walking over to the Benson and into, into the class, and I was going to take the quiz. But then uh, Zach called me and said that you had hit your head on the, the court and that you'd been knocked out and that you were going to the hospital. And he was wondering if I could come to the hospital. So then... I left the quiz and came over to the hospital. I just remember walking in and I think I said a joke. You laughed and I don't know. It seemed like you were okay and you were acting like your typical self, like just laughing and joking around. So, so I wasn't too worried because cause you were just acting totally fine. We took you, I drove you home. And then I think me and Jessica went and got your car and then she drove it back to your place, back to our place, I guess. Um, but then I got home and you were talking to your mom and then your mom talked to me for a little bit. I got her phone number, she gave it to me. Um, she was telling me to just watch you and keep her updated. And you asked for a blessing, so I gave you a blessing that night. That week, we had been going to the temple every morning. So we went, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning. And then I was saying that I was going to go Friday morning, but and you wanted to go, but I was just like, no, you should, you should just stay and sleep. I woke up, I went to the temple, and then I went to the gym after going to the temple 
And while I was at the gym, uh, your mom tried calling me, but I didn't answer because I was, because <laughs> um, I had, because I knew she was going to be asking like how you were doing and if I had checked on you and I hadn't yet. And I was like, Oh no. So I just like left the gym and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll go back right now, check on him, and then I'll call her back. And then I walked in, and Andrew was sitting on the couch. And I was like, seen Matt today? Is he up? He's like, yeah, he's just back in the bathroom throwing up. I was like, oh, like, is he okay? He's like, yeah, I think so. And so I went walking back there, and you were just, like, on your knees hunting sitting by the the toilet throwing up every once in a while and I was like trying to talk to you ask you questions but you weren't like really answering me and I thought that was just like I mean they said at the hospital that you'd have some like symptoms of like confusion and stuff so I just kind of dismissed it as nothing um so I was just back from the gym, so I needed to get in the shower. And I'm pretty sure your bathroom was on the right and mine was on the left. So And you were throwing up in my bathroom. So since it seemed like you didn't need anything, I just like went around you, grabbed my towel, grabbed my shampoo out of that shower, and then I was just going to switch bathrooms uh, to take my shower. Um, and I got into the other bathroom and I was like, I don't know, it just kind of like hit me that, I don't know, if like the spirit was telling me that, you know, something was wrong. I just like stopped and I came back to you and I was like, Matt, should I be concerned that you're not responding to me? And you just like paused and you said, yeah. I was like, and then I just like got really worried at that point and then I went and called your mom. I was like, I think he needs to go into the ER again. Because um, he's just like, he's not getting better. He's getting worse. Um, and so she's like, yeah, that's okay. He took you back. And I talked to the emergency room nurse again. And once again, she said, oh, we're just sending him home. Oh, yes, he's very, very sick, but we're just sending him home. And I said, why don't you keep him in the hospital? She said, oh, well, we don't do that for concussions. And so I was very upset. And they wouldn't keep you. I said, I can be there tomorrow. Just keep him one night. So then I found out who your bishop was. I called him. And I told him the situation. And that I needed a mom to take care of my son until I could get there. And he said he and his wife could take care of you. So he went and picked you up, took you to her, their house. And then I talked to Debbie, his wife, made contact, just said, if you have any questions, give me a call. If I have any questions, I'll call you. And so um, I would check in once in a while. And she told me that, you know, you were eating a little bit and, you know, talking to her. She said that you did tell her that you had three brothers and seven sisters. So I thought, okay, good. You know, his, his memory's good. He's, he's doing okay. And, and then I called you later and asked you what you're doing. He said, well, I'm just sitting on the floor. I said, and why are you sitting on the floor? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know why I'm sitting on the floor. I thought, okay, this is not normal. Um, so I talked to Debbie again and found out that you had been throwing up too at her house. Uh, once on the kitchen bar, <laughs> she told me later, he just acted like it was normal, just, you know, lean over and throw up on my bar and he didn't offer to clean it up, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and then he threw up in the bedroom. 
anyway, so I knew you were not well. And so the next time I tried to communicate with you, I just texted you, but you didn't respond. And so that was the last of my conversation with you. So fast forward to, I get on a plane. We don't wait for the baby blessing. I just get on the plane and take off and get to Idaho Falls on Saturday. And Debbie picks me up from the uh, Salt Lake Express. So she was gone about 20 minutes, picked me up and to drive back again. So I walk in to Debbie's house and you're sitting on the couch. The TV is on, but you're not looking at it. And so I walk in front of you and say, hi, Matt. And you just had this glazed look in your eye. You didn't talk to me. You didn't look in my eyes. You just looked like you were gone. And so I said to Debbie, we got to go to the emergency room right now. And so we grabbed a bucket because we thought you might throw up again. You and I got in the back seat. And fortunately, her house was only five minutes from the hospital. And so we walk in with you. Debbie's on one side, I'm on the other. The hospital was in Idaho Falls, not the Rexburg Hospital. We walk into the emergency room. They start asking you questions. They see that you don't know what's going on. And they immediately got you back. Uh, to take care of you. There was no waiting. They could see how ill you were. You're seen by the emergency room doctor first. And we told him about the concussion, told him what had been happening the last two days. He wanted to um, do a CAT scan. And he told me after the CAT scan, he actually brought me in to look at it. And it says, he said that it, there's some dried blood which shows that you had a bleed, but it had stopped. But there's also fresh bleeding right now. And so he said, sometimes you um, can get the bleeding to stop, but sometimes you don't, and you actually have to have a surgery. And so I, at that point, thought, okay, we might have to have surgery, you might not. And... Anyway, so then they called in the uh, neurosurgeon. And so when he got there, um, he looked at it and he said to me, I have to do emergency brain surgery right now or your son will die. And if I can save him, he won't be the son. you knew before. And so he went to get ready for the surgery. I just remember stroking your hair and thinking, I didn't think this was gonna be how Matt's life would end. Because at that point, I thought you were dying. And, you know, I didn't even pray for you to be healed or anything. I just prayed to accept God's will. But um, before you went into surgery, Rebecca's brother-in-law came and with a friend of his and he gave you a priesthood blessing. And when he started the prayer, he said, 
Matt, this blessing is coming from Heavenly Father. Your Heavenly Father and Savior love you so much. And then there's a long pause. And so I just kind of braced myself that he was going to bless you to pass away peacefully. But then he started again, he goes, Matt, you're going to be okay. You're going to be completely healed. And at that point, all my doubts of you dying left. I thought, okay, this is God's will. God's will is that he's going to be okay. And so from then on, I was at complete peace that I didn't know how long it was going to take, but I knew that someday you're going to be completely well. And so you went into surgery. It was late, probably about midnight. Because we, yeah. And the doctor finally came out and he said, that went better than I thought it was going to go. I thought, oh, wonderful. But then he says, but there are a lot of dead brain cells. And so, because of all the pressure of the blood on his brain. And so I had to take out a part of his brain um, about the size of a cutie orange. It was especially hard with Michelle because she was standing by me when the doctor came out of surgery. And yeah, she, Just cried so much. Because you'd been really good to her too. I mean, sometimes you two would drive each other crazy, but <laughs> that sisterly love. Yeah, she didn't want to lose you. But they asked for the speech therapist to come into ICU. She says, you're already beginning to talk. And when she came in, she said, I've never been in an ICU as a speech therapist before, but if you're talking, I've got to be here. The nurse met me in the hallway. He said, I've never seen anything like this before. You know, Matt's going through all the stages that a person goes through for recovery, but instead of taking it days, is taking hours. Every hour I see a major accomplishment. So I've never seen anything like this before. And so you're only there maybe a day and a half. And they said, you know, he's doing so well, we just got him up, get him up for physical therapy up on the sixth floor. Anyway, it was um, just, I mean, you have to call it a miracle. From the day of your accident to the day you were discharged was 15 days. But that doesn't mean we didn't have to do a lot of other physical therapy and occupational therapy and things when speech therapy, you know, things had to continue on. Matt? So, good morning. It's uh, Monday, December 3rd, 2018. And uh, just about to make some breakfast. And I was about to open up some eggs and <laughs> realized that I had this new pack of 60 here. And 
just wanted to take a quick little video of it, of it and just say hello. And whoever's watching this, I love you. Good morning and goodbye. Well, and good morning again. I thought we were really good friends. Um, I felt like you were someone that, that I looked up to a lot, uh, especially like spiritually, like you. Um, I don't know, you just, or is it ever, you're just, you're just a really spiritual guy. And uh, we're, we're always like doing your best to, you know, follow the commandments, to read your scriptures, and also just like to be a good guy um, and to like be friendly to like everyone that was around us. Like you were always friendly to everyone in, in the ward and um, you're also killing it with the ladies. So of course I wanted to be like you. <laughs> um but now like yeah, i just looked up to you and saw you as a really good friend and you know we we were going to the temple a lot we play basketball uh we were waking up super early to go to the gym together so you were focusing on graduating making sure you finished up strong because i think that was your last semester um and you were still outgoing and friendly and nice to people and getting to know them um, but it was a lot more reserved and kind of uh, not shy, but you weren't just going out of your way to go talk to everybody about everything because you're like, I'm graduating soon. I don't really remember some of these people. And it was it was a little bit different <laughs> um, seeing you try to interact with somebody. You're like, oh, yeah. And then you'd be like, I do not remember that person at all. I'm like, oh, shoot, his memory's gone for that. I think I've learned is no matter – what a doctor might say, like our doctor said, you know, he won't be the same son that you had before. Um, probably won't be able to talk, probably won't be able to walk. Um, well, this is what I know is you have to find out what is God's will. No matter what tragedy happens, um, Find out what God's will is, and then just have faith. The scripture, with God, nothing is impossible. I now know that for fact, because you are a walking miracle.